You're listening to The Soju Sessions, episode 59 on the Soju Talk Nation podcast feed. I'm your host, Crispy, also known as Crispy Wonton, or simply just Anton. And coming up, Goldie from the Soju Talk Nation, Gochu Gang member, patron of the show, uh, joins me to discuss her origins in K-pop, discuss her origins with the Soju Talk podcast uh the server and honestly this is the first time i've actually talked to her uh, my very first interaction so i learned a lot about her um she is from denmark so yes joe cab your neighbor um i think joe cab did know that ahead of time um she did enlighten me about that during the show but um really cool down-to-earth person that really taught me a lot about certain internet communities specifically about photo cards i had no idea and then we get into some music discussion um covering bi with btbt um you know pretty chill song pretty vibey song um and pretty cool that she had a lot of wonderful things to say about it so yeah just overall super fun getting to know goldie um hope you guys enjoy And yeah, give her a shout out on the server. She is a super cool down to earth person. She's getting her master's in speech sciences. So definitely doing a service um, to the world. So shout out to her for um, being a net positive human being uh, because we could all use more healthcare specialists um, in a number of different fields. Um, She's definitely doing good things out there. So yeah, great chat with, uh, with Goldie. All right, let's get into it. Coming up, my chat with Goldie on the Soju Sessions. Joining Soju Sessions all the way in Central Europe. Uh, CST is her... Um, Northern, Northern Europe. I'm from Denmark. Northern Europe. Denmark. Denmark. Oh, we've got another Denmark person. Okay. We've, we've got a lot to talk about today. Um, the one and only Goldie. Welcome to the show, Goldie. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. No, it's... Okay. So full disclosure, uh, this is the first time Goldie and I have ever really talked. So I know next to nothing about her. Um her mentioning that she's from Denmark right now is brand new information to me. Very exciting. Uh, she is a member of the Gochu Gang, a patron. And in my quest to talk to every patron on the server who helps support the Soju Talk um, Discord and the main show, um, I've got her on. And we're going to get her origin story. So Goldie, um, what is your K-pop origin story? When did you start listening? And what were your first memories of K-pop? Um, my first introduction to K-pop, apart from Gangnam Style, of course, was actually a YouTube React video from the React channel. I was just mindlessly browsing. Um, and through that, I saw the BTS Blood, Sweat and Tears music video and decided, that looks kind of nice. Let's try to watch the whole thing. And, um, yeah, then it, like, rolled on from there on. So you can say my first proper k-pop memory was bts blood sweat and tears in 2017 2017 nice did that snowball into furthering your experiences with bts did you go into the discography did you watch other music videos from that point i did i i did go directly from when i discovered blood sweat and tears i traveled a year to new zealand um and when i was in new zealand it's Closer to Korea for the first part, so there's a lot more K-pop just out and about, a lot more Korean people. Um, then I dived into the BTS discography and was quite hyped for the um, Love Yourself Tear album when that came out, I remember, very clearly. Um, and then, yeah, it continued. Now, I don't really consume that much BTS content anymore. It's more other groups, but... Like BTS was still my introduction, you could say. Yeah, it's it's that starting point, right? To get you to yes. um, go down the rabbit hole of K-pop and start to expose yourself to other artists, other genres within K-pop. 
Um, what other artists um, would you say that are your favorites since you've kind of explored the world of K-pop since then? Um, I really liked Seventeen. Is my favorite group uh, at the moment, and then Weekly and Fresher. So you are a carrot. Freshly. Amazing. Yes. Um, you're Very a, hardcore, actually. You're a carrot and a, a Tume? Is that the yeah. treasure people? Okay, so um, yes. Koala, treasured Koala, she is uh, She is happy to hear that. Uh, moderator on the server from Germany. Um, maybe you guys should meet up. I mean, you guys are so close to each other, essentially. Um, and then Nina is the other enormous carrot on the server. Biff Miller um, likes to remind me that um, he is not listening to men. 17 are not men. It's a running joke, but he loves 17 as well. Um, well I've heard that uh, 17 is the K-pop group that's written by women. I don't know anything. So enlighten me. Is that... it's, a, it's a whole thing. Okay, when you're in, like, in literary, you can always tell when a male character is written by a woman. Because they don't... Yeah, it's a whole thing. I joke a lot about it with my friends that the members of Seventeen and uh, Yuta from NCT, they're like people who wouldn't buy rim- women. So... What are the... Then it just... Yeah, what are yeah, the... Yeah, it's more... Yeah, it's like you can always see when a female character is written by a man. Okay. It's the same thing, sense. just the other way around. Yeah. Okay. And that's all starting to solidify in my head now. Um, with Seventeen specifically, what are some elements about their songwriting or um, depictions in music videos that you can characterize very clearly? That was um, behind the mind of a great woman. Uh, I don't know. It's mostly... Um, yeah, I don't have any examples. Um, they're really caring, I think. Like, they care. They're very... Like, they all re-signed here. Like, all 13 of them re-signed. So, they clearly like each other. That's a good point. And it's very sweet with their member rings. They always have them on. Um, yeah. And then, they're just... I don't know, more open with their feelings than a lot of others. And that's like a key characteristic of a male character written by a woman is like accepting your own feelings. I don't, I don't know. How did we get here? We, we got so. here because we talk about our feelings <laughs> on this show. We talk about our emotions. We explore a lot of the things that should be normalized in culture and yet are um, consistently repressed, not just yes. in Eastern <laughs> culture, but in every culture. United States, uh, men in the United States. Hello. Hi, I am one of them. Um, well, let me let me ask you a little bit further. So you mentioned in yeah. the literature specifically, do you have a literary background? Um, do you study? Not, uh, not other than I read a whole lot when I was younger. I was a real bookworm when I was younger. So I've written, read, and I have not written anything, but I've read quite a lot. Um, so I, I don't have any other literary background than that. Do you still continue to read quite often? I think so, yeah. When I have the time, I'm studying right now, so I read more for, yeah. You read more for school than for yeah, fun. Yeah, read more for school than for fun. But I do read a little bit for fun sometimes. Nice. When you read a whole lot for school, you don't really have much energy to read even more, even though it's for fun. I 100% feel that, yeah. Um, yeah, my job right now requires me to read a lot of things, um, read a lot of documents and such. So um, it is a bit of a struggle to read outside for fun, but um, I have a commute where I'm on the bus now, so I, at least I have that 45 minutes to do that. So, um, yeah, I'm sorry to learn that there's a lot of bookworms on the server. Um, Haley is an enormous bookworm herself. Um, so it's just really cool to see like different connections and seeing other people from all, all across the world, right? Um, through K-pop, have you made any friends, um, whether that's online or in real life, and have you connected with people further through K-pop? I actually do collect photo cards. Um, so through that, like Instagram photo card trading, I made quite a lot of friends. Uh, most of them from Denmark because it's easier to meet up if they also live in Copenhagen than if they live in Berlin or Milano or something. But I also have some friends in Holland and Germany that also met over the Instagram K-pop trades community. That's I guess. amazing. Um... 
Well, tell me. So I, this is a whole world that I don't know anything about. I've heard about vaguely. So explain further um, photo card trading and kind of meeting up. Is it, um, I don't know, is it? Is it akin to like a convention? Do you just meet up at a coffee shop? Do you just open your folder? You send by mail. Ah, uh, okay. Is it, if they live in Copenhagen, you can meet up. Uh, that's fine too. But if I have to send something to a girl in Berlin, I'm not going to go to Berlin and give it to her. I'm going to send her a letter with the photo card inside, and then she's going to send her part of the trade to me. So... It's a very expensive hobby. I can already say that. Yeah, but there's a mutual it's, exchange, which uh, at least from some yeah. type of connection with another person or the yeah. thing, right? Do you write um, a card, um, like a note, when you send your photo cards? Yeah, you always write like, hello, thank you for trading with me. I hope Dachian makes it safely and then sign with your Instagram ad so they can send you proof. So you get proof that you actually send out your part of the trade. Some other people you might trade to can say, ah, she does send out her stuff so you don't get scammed. Yeah, I was going to ask, how do you build that trust between folks on the internet? Um, how, you get a lot of proof Okay. in your Instagram. So you have a highlight that just called proof and then a lot of uh, story proof from other ones that says, hello, Dahan made it uh, safely. Thank you. And okay. then you do that. No, that's fascinating. Um, it, was it difficult at first? Um, considering like for a brand new person, yeah, in the, right. In the beginning, you don't have any proof. So you just like, then you send out your part of the trade first. And then when the other person gets it, they send out theirs. When you have enough proof, you send out at the same time. Got it. So it's like a cascading, um, I guess, cascading level of trust. Um, with, yeah. With the built in history that you eventually will have with. Um, yeah. And then history. in the beginning you trade not that valuable photo cards and then when you get more rep you can trade the more valuable ones got it wow there's like an entire ecosystem that i'm learning about right it's, now yeah it's it was amazing. very hard to figure out in the beginning but now i've done it for one and a half year and now it's like more normal so would you say your 17 collection is pretty complete yes i do i collect songkwan from 17, and not all of 17, because there's 13 members, and their album and Ode had 20 PCs, like, photo cards per member of 17. That was a lot. So I collect Songkwan, and I have all his album cards and all his Japanese cards, and then there's a lot of merch cards and concert cards and DVD cards and all that. You so are. 17 has a lot of the cards. Like, it's a group with a lot of cards. You are not starved for physical items of memorabilia for your favorite. I have a lot. It's amazing. <laughs> a lot. No, that, that's incredible. Yeah. No, it's just so cool that you're able to kind of connect on the internet that way and that there's this entire world of trading. But mm. I don't know. I, I do also feel like there's a, a bit of a personal connection you have when you make those trades, right? Because, I mean, there are real people. Yeah. You're getting a physical item back uh, and sending a physical item Um to get that item back in return. Um, and it, I don't know, I just, I, I'm just incredibly like fascinated right now. Um, but uh, I do have to move along. So um, Denmark, you said. Um, yes. Joe Cab, right? He's from there. Around. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Have you talked to him? Have you talked to uh, our, our friend? When Jokab? I just in the beginning joined the server, I wrote in the welcoming tab, hello, my name's Trine, I'm from Denmark, and then dog tag joke hat in my post because it was also from Denmark, and then I wrote a little bit, and then uh, not more than that, no. No, t totally fine. Um, Joe Cab is an amazing person. He's a dear friend of mine, so I will just let him know right now that I talk to you, and hopefully he will talk to you as well. Um, but yes, the Soju Talk. K-pop podcast um, and the server. How did you find the K-pop? Wow. How did you find the podcast? And what were your first experiences like um, finding the server? Um, I was working at a, a job in a big um, factory building where I just packed boxes. And you can listen to stuff when you do that. So I was like, I want to listen to a K-pop podcast because that was my interest. And I was just a little bit tired of listening to just the music. Because it could be a bit tiresome when you're there seven days, seven hours a time. So I googled best K-pop podcasts, 
as you do. And then I found a list where there was different kind of podcasts, and a lot of them were just like BTS podcasts. And I felt like I knew that. Like, it was not anything groundbreaking these girls were talking about in these podcasts that I didn't already know. And then I found the Soldier Talk, where they talked about the new releases of the week. Um, I think it was back. It was back in 2020, I think. Spring 2020, I started listening. Yeah. Right about the pandemic, the start of the pandemic. Yeah, right about the start of the pandemic. Like, I got this job two days after Denmark went into lockdown for the first pandemic in March. Um, so I, I guess I found this podcast in March 2020, they're about. So. But just a good Google search, really. What was that like um, listening to Doug Warren and Anita talk about new releases every week and essentially the show being fresh, new, um, and also kind of an introduction to a wider world of K-pop than BTS or Seventeen or the handful of artists that you're currently listening to? Oh, I'm listening to a lot more than a handful of artists. I am listening. To, you cannot see it, but right over here I have my uh, um, shelves with my albums. And it is a lot. Um, so when I started listening to the podcast, I did listen to, I would say, a lot of different artists. Every time I saw someone new put out a release, I listened to it. And because of that, the Soju Talk was nice because I had already listened to the songs. So to hear someone other than myself talk about it and like what they yeah, thought about it was also nice to just hear that conversation because at that point when I started this job and started listening to the podcast I didn't I hadn't joined the uh, trading community yet so I didn't have anyone to talk to K-pop to because none of my friends listens to K-pop so it was like the ones that actually talked about K-pop I could listen to that's amazing um yeah I, I probably shouldn't have assumed that you only listen to a handful of artists but I think it's cool that you listen to new music um, as it's coming out, and then all of a sudden, yes. Doug Waranita will cover it. Um, and I think that's kind of the, the brilliance of the show, where they do their best to cover all the new songs, as many new songs as possible, that also reach the widest audience. And I think that's so cool that you yourself are super active already in the world of K-pop, that it's just second nature to just get a little bit of extra um, feedback from them every week. Um, what is it about their relationship that stood out to you as far as the way they talked about K-pop um, that was different from the other shows that you were exploring at that time? First of all, it's like two guys and a girl. Pretty different because in all the other podcasts I tried to listen to before was just two girls. Um, and it was mainly boy groups. And I, I like boy groups, but I also really love boy girl groups. And they didn't really talk, but here they are. Also that it may sound a bit mean, but their favorite artists were not BTS. It was also right nice. That, like... Variety, Warren, right? <laughs> yes, exactly. Warren likes Rocket Punch and Doug likes Ice One. That was nice, too. Yeah. And not having them be and, and BTS. Anita likes music from the 80s and 70s. So, I mean, there you yes, go. Perfect. <laughs> no, that's brilliant. Um, No, I don't think it's mean at all. I think... Uh, BTS podcasts are popular for a reason, right? They are the yes. largest K-pop group um, piece of media coming from Korea over the past, what, 10 years um, since Psy. Um, but at that point in the way that we were communicating and we were producing content, it was very different, right? So with yes. podcasts and the way it's evolved, it becomes a conversation, it becomes a weekly discussion. And how do you you know, express yourself just as a K-pop fan. And I think Doug Warren and you to do a great job of having that variety, having that different perspective, but also liking different things. Um, you know, there is overlap in the interest and the sensibility sometimes, but for the most part, I feel like they're all pretty different with how um, they approach K-pop. Um, from listening to them, I know you listen to a lot of K-pop, but were there any groups that surprised you Um that you found through them that you eventually started to really like and enjoy? Um, Stacy, I think, because there's this whole, there's this whole weekly versus Stacy thing going on last year. And I love weekly. 
I love Weekly. They're my favorite girl group. And I love After School. So I, I am firmly in the After School section of ASAP versus After School. And they just, like, uh, the gang just kept on talking about ASAP. And I had listened to it, and, like, it was not really my taste in music, but they just kept on talking about it. And then Stereotype came out, and they just kept talking about ASAP and Stereotype now. And then Run To You came out, and they just kept on talking about ASAP. And I was like, I must have missed something. What did I miss? And then I started listening to them again. And then I really, I really like Run To You, and especially Young Love on the album, because I always listen to the whole album. When I listen to a new one, I listen to the whole album, because sometimes you don't like the title, but you can like the album. Um, and I really like Young Love, and then I like Run To You. I still don't really like ASAP, but that's a whole other thing. But I really like those two, and I also like Stacy, like the other B-sides, because I tried to stereotype uh, B-sides and such. No, that's... that's I... I appreciate that story, honestly, because I think it's very easy to put two groups who came out very similar in time against each other, right? I mean, it's all yeah. about making comparisons and putting a death to the duel when oftentimes you can like two things separate and equally at the same time. Um, I love all of... I loved Weekly when they came out. I loved Weekly when they were doing their thing last year. And then... Now it's not I, it's not going very well, is it? And then I still love them as people. You know, they're just they're, they're um, great. When kids. Paris is just not good, like the two last albums, I was like, we need we need to to re control the ship. Where is it going? Like, please let us uh, not die. It would be great. I love Weekly. I love like the first three albums are so good. Yeah, they, that B side that's just called Weekly is legit one of my favorite songs. Hundred percent. Yeah. Um. They. But they, but, but ha I don't know what happened with the play game two albums. I, it's really awful. I love. But it's just. Uh, no. You, I'm in a conflict. I don't know if you can feel it. I can feel it. I feel all of the nervous <laughs> energy right now. It's like you want to love them so much, and yet they ah! did something that was very contradictory to what you already knew and established from them. And I think. Yes. It's a lot to go through. I understand. I empathize. I'm here for you. Um. But the the whole like comparison thing, right? I think it, it's mm. it's a fun starting point for conversation. But the discussion sometimes, not all the time, and not saying it happens specifically on our server, although you know depends on your point of view. Um, it becomes a uh, very confrontational, and I think it's fun overall. I mean, I stand on the side of I really liked Weekly. But there was something about Stacy that just really hit a nostalgic note to me. Right? I am older. Um, the running joke is that I'm 90 years old. I am sorry. I liked music from the 90s and 2000s. And I feel like Stacy has done a nice job to reincorporate a lot of those very familiar sounds into a very modern K-pop. I apologize for going on a Stacy rant. I love them very much, but um, yeah, I'm glad that my you favorite love genre them. of music is uh, it's music that could play over a teen coming of age movie. So we're talking TXT's Ghosting, and we're talking Seventeen's My Dawn's Hotter Than Day, and uh, Kidult, and all those where you're like, this could be a um, BTS Microcosmos. There's also a good one. Like everything that could just be a teen coming of age movie. That's my that's my jam. You should make a teen coming of age movie playlist. I would listen to it. Um, feel free to do that and then share it with myself or I think there's a music recommendation channel and then tag me so I can get to it because that sounds incredible. I love coming of age introspective thinking themes and music so yeah no that's that's amazing um there's another song that just that came one to road trip scene in all teen movies like the soundtrack that plays over that montage that's that's mine yeah there's another song that just came to mind but then i forgot it um i was gonna add to your wonderful list but your list is probably amazing and incredible um no that's that that i think the power of what doug warren and nita have done as far as exposing people to different music and um you know they, they have their personal feelings towards what they love and like, but I think it's cool that people can disagree and then imagine, change your mind, um, which, which I think is, I think it, it's, it's something that on the internet is sometimes very difficult because you're not talking to like a real person. Well, you're, t you're responding to text on a screen, but then when you see another person and you get a 
immediate response. I feel like that is far um, a really valuable social component to what K-pop can be. And um, I don't know, it's just, it's just actually just super cool hearing you talk about it that way. Um, for the record, I do like Weekly and Stacey. It's just... Uh, this trajectory is a bit um, yes. worrying. Trajectory. Great, great word. Um, it was so good. Pre-debuted, it was so good. Yeah. Hundred percent. They they captured the high teen. They were so they were energy. so close to being the female seventeen with their choreographies. Wow. And then they just like what happened with the props? The props were like weekly thing. And then holiday party came out and there was no props. And then when Pada came out and who knows what happened to that one. So that's sad. I'm here for you. This is this is your therapy session, so no worries at all. <laughs> Um, I don't have a good segue for this, so we're just going to jump into this week in Sochi Talk Music. <laughs> um, this week in Sochi Talk Music, so we've got um, a number of, you know, I would say like low-key songs. I, that's the best way I can put it. I don't think there's like a huge release this week, but I just picked the song that I found most interesting and that I liked quite a bit. So we're going to cover B.I. with B.T.B.T. featuring Davida and Soulja Boy. Interesting pairing. Uh, well, it's like three people pairing. What's a, what's a three person pairing? I don't know. Words are hard. Perfect. Trifecta, something like that. Interesting. Isn't that a Roma thing? Yeah, yeah. Interesting combination of people. I'll say that much. Um, yeah. Divina. The only thing I could think about when I saw Soldier Boy was that he scammed people out of a gaming console, and that's like a very interesting choice of rapper. Yeah, um, well, let's start there. So, you know, Soldier Boy, I think for a person like me who doesn't necessarily follow Western media very much, I know him from one song. Um, it's the, the Soldier Boy. Okay, I'm not even. It, yeah, it's, it's the one song you heard with Soldier Boy. Yeah, uh, but apparently he's done music and he's kind of evolved and grown as a person. I think that was almost 10 years ago now. So, oh, maybe over 10 years ago. Um, so, he's definitely, you know, hopefully having matured, but he does sound far more mature than i expected um in this song he blends in really well with bi and his tone kind of that raspy sing rap that he has um what did um, you think about the song and kind of this being a very mellow dance almost summer house track yeah but like first listen i did like it it's very pleasant to listen to um i think bi and davida sounds very similar similar when they sing, like the first time I listened to it, I had to like, now we swift swap singer, didn't we? I had to do like the color coded lyrics just to be completely sure. Um, I have some problems with the second rap verse from BI, but that's purely because I study speech science and he's lisping a little bit and it's the only thing I can hear. Interesting. No, that's. I want like, to. It's, further it's clearly an artistic yeah. choice. But I can only hear the lisp, and then annoys me. Oh man, no! I that's an incredible pers perspective, um, just from a speech science perspective, from yeah. almost like a developmental perspective. No, um, I actually didn't catch that um, that I guess stylistic choice that he made. Um, I was really just trying to figure out how like the melody was blending with his his sound, um, because I think. He's been going in this direction of a little bit more melancholy, a lot of more introspective music. So how did this song kind of pair with what he did last year? And in a lot of ways, it's a moving forward, but very much still kind of in the same genre of like mellow hip hop, right? That almost blends into yeah. R&B. Uh, I think what you said about DaVita um, is right on. I love DaVita, but that's probably my, my one gripe with the song is that they sound a little too similar. Um, at they first, do sound very similar. Uh, yeah, I could not differentiate between the two. And that um, goes in... What's the word? It surprised me how low-key she was in the song. I said low-key like three times already. Um, because D Davida, for me, is a very emotional singer, right? She doesn't necessarily belt, but she has a lot of moments where the song is minimalist, where she's able to really sing and you feel her emotion. She felt like an addition to the song, 100%, but an addition to B.I., which it makes sense because it's his song, but there was nothing about her part where it's like, oh, she 
stands out as the Davida character of the song, right? Um, she's not in the music video. Um, I don't think Soldier Boy's in the music video as well. Um, but yeah, I don't think when Soldier Boy's on the music video track. Yes, you're right. He's not credited um, because I initially had written down just Davida, and then I listened to the song. It's like, oh, there's more. The Spotify credit but has him on it, but not. Yes, on but the yeah, music I think. Video. But I think isn't the music video version of the song without Soldier Boy? Because I just saw like I just saw a comment that was like the Soldier Boy is on the spot the actual like music piece on Spotify. So it sounded like I didn't I only watched the music video once. Uh maybe it's twice. So I can't remember. He's definitely on the Spotify one, but I just remember that one comment that Soldier Boy is on the Spotify track. So I don't know even know if he's on the music video track. He's not credited at least. Yeah. Um I'm not 100% sure. I was kind of just wrapped in the visuals of the music video. Um I did I will say I after knowing where Davida's parts are, I was able to pinpoint them even in the music video. Soldier Boy's parts, I was waiting for it at the end. I probably re- need to rewatch it a couple of times. Because the rap actually flowed quite nicely from B.I. into Soldier Boy. Um, to the point where, even with my preconception of what Soldier Boy is with his hit song, um, I didn't feel like that was him at all. I felt like that was just another easy listening rapper, which was good, which is great. Because that kind of changes my perspective of, of, of who Soldier Boy is um, historically as an artist. Um, so I do feel like that blended in pretty well. But it's something to revisit as far as how that paired with the music video, right? So um, good, good, good point out there. Um, but with the music video, what did you think about the cyberpunk themes? Um, it was very cinematic. A lot of CGI. It was, it was very cinematic. Um, it looked expensive. Yeah. Um, which is kind of cool because he's kind of doing his own thing. But what did you think about how yeah. it was all styled and um, you know had a lot of cyberpunk tropes? It's very up in time, isn't it? I feel like we've seen cyberpunk or something there quite often recently. Just the NMAX one is the first one that jumps to mind. And what was the other one? That's my, that's a bit older, but Kai's mm was also very space-themed. But it was not what I'd expected when I listened to the song the first time. But it, strangely enough, it fits. Yeah, I think they they did find a way to make the tone fit with the way that the song, uh, the music video was edited, right? Because it is very much um, kind of the, you know, youth in search of meaning, you know, going through the city while the city being a setting in the future with enormous buildings, flying cars, um, holographic billboards, holographic uh, images that you can interact with. But at the same time, it's all very aged old um I guess story settings, right? Where they're lost at the night, hanging out, um, looking over, um, looking over the top of the building into the city, um, and really just thinking introspectively of what that means for the rest of your life, right? Um, which mm-hmm. pairs with the song. Um, so it does. the the song the, the the I so going back to the song a bit, I do like the fact that um, he there's a lot of English in the song, but he rhymes it with the title of the song. So the so- title is BTB. T, um, which translates to staggering, and then the context of it is staggering steps, as if you're a lover who's moving towards something or someone um, you desire. Right? Um, mm. Shout out to Bandwagon uh, That's where I kind of pulled that uh, description from. Uh, Want to s- cite the source there? Um, but yes. yes, they definitely. Uh, well, Bi um, definitely captures a lot of that with this um, shifting space of love with the music video you know with shots of the person of interest the the woman in the music video but not necessarily of her specifically right you don't know if she's the person of interest or if she's just the conduit for um kind of searching for yourself searching for love so um yeah no i think i think this is a cool song it's it's a very mellow song a vibey song it's a pre-release and this is a great way to pre-release into an album if you ask me it's very. I have not listened to a lot of Bi. I like what's it called? Ila Ila, yeah, yeah, the first one. Um, and it it's the very much same vein as that one. So it's like he's building up a a sound. Like I could hear this was 
from the one other BI song I've listened to like a lot, this sounded like a BI song. And a little bit like the uh, I Can't Love scenario. Like it has the same vibe. Yeah. So. Yeah, definitely he has definitely has a style, right? Between his work yes. with Icon and um here as a soloist. So yeah, no. Um I'm excited for, for BI. I this is my genre. So I will just say that much. I am very much in the hip hop R and B mellower side of male soloists, male artists, male groups. Um so I've been listening to a lot of male artists recently just because a lot of their music is similar in this genre. So yeah, no. Um, shout out to Icon. That that song last week was great. Yeah. But you, I love that song. I don't. Oh my! God. I don't remember the last time I enjoyed a, a male group a song as much as I did that song. Even if it wasn't like groundbreaking, I just found it super enjoyable. And that's just. I also fun. really liked the last Icon song. It wasn't really that hyped in the um, on the show. But I really liked it. Was it why, 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 or was it, it was really good? Yeah, that that was a really cool um, again like, like a comeback. Yeah, like an introspective in a, song, like, right? Yeah, no, I don't know. I guess maybe I'm just like a mellow music person when it comes to work groups. Just like put me in a mellow space. All right. Um, any final? I thoughts? was just kidding. Good. I'm just happy it was not a a, a dark a neon blue concept. I'm very tired of those. That's also one of the reasons I like Seventeen. They don't do the whole dark, neon, shadow concepts. It's more bright. They they did pretty you. That's as bright as it comes. They're very bright, 100%. Um, both visually and in their music choices. So, no, I, I think that's what's cool about Seventeen, where they can kind of separate themselves from a lot of K-pop right now, boy groups specifically. Um, want to see one, NCT one. I like NCT one two seven, but it's very much the same vibe they're giving off. Yeah. I always joke. I have a friend who loves NCT Dream. She loves NCT Dream. I'm mean, always joke about that. One two seven don't smile. Like they smile in interviews, and but if you watch the music videos, it's all very serious. All the time. And we do collect their photo cards. And their photo cards is always, always very broody. And very, like, serious and handsome. And we just miss the smiles. Yes. That's, I mean, that's, they're not written by women. Yeah. Yuta is, but the rest is not. Yeah. I mean, it feels like that's NCT <laughs> 127's character, right? So. Yes. Yeah, man. Um boy groups i don't know where, who i am anymore i'm just listening to all these boy groups um moving into closing thoughts um what are you hopeful for for the rest of the year now we've got a lot of k-pop coming up i feel like it's a little bit of a quiet time in the past few weeks but it's all gearing up to perhaps announcements of world tours for a number of groups i mean we've got so many so far but i feel like it's just a matter of time where we just get everyone from like summer yeah. all the way until january um, hopes. Seventeen is coming up with a new album, like very soon. I look forward to that one. It's a full-length album. Set the sun. Very exciting. Um, I hope that Weekly get a very good release. Um, yeah, and I hope that uh, the K-pop artists' world tour includes Europe, because normally it's just a lot of state cities in America. And then a lot of cities in Asia, and then that's it. And then we like we maybe get one in Berlin and maybe one in London. Um, and if you think that the American shows are hard to get tickets to, try if there's only two shows in the entire continent. It's very hard. It's very hard. Um, yeah, I think that was it. Really hope Treasure gets more than one comeback. Hope they don't do a Blackpink. I think that was it, yeah. Nice. I uh, hope. What are you hopeful for in your own life? Um, you know, separate or connected to K-pop, but what are some things you're looking forward to as the school year wraps up um, and summertime comes around? Um, yeah, I'm very looking forward to my exams being over. It's always a plus. 
then I'm starting again September for my last year of school when I'm gonna be get my masters. Um, I'm going to a wedding in September in Detroit. Detroit? In Detroit? Um, so that's also going to be exciting because American weddings are very different than Danish weddings. So, it's a lot. Detroit, do you have family in the Midwest? No, but we were hosting an American exchange student. Um, and she's getting married, so we got invited. So I'm going with my parents, they also come. Nice. Well, that's cool. Um, yeah, shout out to um, Detroit and Michigan. That's where Doug and Anita and Warren all met. Um, so yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. Maybe you can, to, you can ask them for off, advice off, what to do over. there. <laughs> Detroit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so. If you don't mind me asking, what are you uh, studying? Speech science, audio logopedics. It's called. Cool. Oh, okay. Okay. Nice. And that's what you're um, going in for your masters. Uh, yeah, I'm halfway after. through my master's now. Got it. I did my bachelor's last, like the last past three years, and then this year I've done the first year of my master's, and then I'm going to graduate. So I'm at 23. Nice. Well, best of luck. With, uh, thank you. Yeah, you you are killing it. So, you know, you're going to make a big difference in the world because, um, you know, we all need more people in various forms of science and healthcare because the world is... Uh, what it is. Gripes with B.I.'s lispy rap in his second verse. <laughs> a unique perspective, if anything. Yes, that's also, I really love Stray Kids, but uh, Ian has a very hyper toned voice. And every time he sings, there's still one thing he can listen to. It's just so nasally. You know what? I like Stray Kids, but I did. Yeah. Uh, and I like Ian as a person, like the uh, variety content, but his song is just, it's so nasally. Well, we can have you be the uh, the sound <laughs> analyst for you know the, the vocal quality for music moving forward. Yes, don't ask me about how the backtrack list sounded like because I uh, I listened to the voices. Got it. Well, you know. So when you talked about the backtrack mixing with the voice, I was like, great, <laughs> I listened to the voice. <laughs> no, that's ah uh, gosh, it's I have so many questions, but then it's going to turn into just you know tell me about your degree, <laughs> tell me about your thesis. So. <laughs> Um, we'll, we'll get into that in, in the future. I, I promise. Um, but yes, this was an incredible conversation. I really appreciate you coming on and really talking about your life. Thank you for inviting everything. me. No, you are so, you so many layers and I feel like we've just barely scratched the surface. I would love to have you on in the future. So you are always welcome here. You are welcome to ask. I probably have time. Perfect. All right. Um, well, thank you, Goldie. I appreciate it. Um, we'll be signing out. Thank you, yes. everyone, for listening to the Soju Sessions on the Soju Talk Nation podcast feed. Subscribe on YouTube, follow on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And continue the conversation on the Soju Talk K-Pop Podcast Discord. For Goldie, I'm Crispy, and this has been the Soju Sessions. Mm-hmm.